You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Devon's Path. So, just a quick update for you guys. Uh, well, also I want to thank you guys so much for helping me with my bot issue that I've been having on my comments. Um, I've barely had to do anything. You guys are awesome. Thanks for helping me clean, keep the house clean, so to speak. And uh, I would also like to say that uh, Fueled by Insanity, I'm going to skip that for now until the next update because there was literally like two minutes of content left. <laughs> so I'm just going to save that for when the new update comes out. And I'm also going to be jumping into Fatal Force. Uh, I've gotten a lot of requests for that. I'm very interested in covering that myself because I love anime and manga. So I'm going to try that and see how it is. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into into some daddy time. Oh, God, this better not be short. <clears throat> it shouldn't be. He's got day two, some day two content. It's been a long day, and the fatigue is finally catching up with me. It wasn't an eventful day, though, thankfully. Sometimes it's nice to just do nothing and enjoy the surroundings, especially in a place like this. Not an eventful day, huh? I guess he must have spent it pretty differently than me. It was mostly the tiring ri the ride that was tiring. I didn't sleep much during it in case anything happened. How about you? Did you get some sleep? I slept through almost the whole thing, but still, sleeping on a bus isn't the same as a proper sleep in a proper bed. It's fine either way with me. Devin swiftly folds the clothes he was holding and stashes them away in a plastic bag and into the wardrobe before turning off the light and getting into bed. Good night, then. Sleep well. Good night. I get into the bed myself, feeling the soft bed clothes envelop my body. Uh, I really like this guest house. The bedding here is nicer than my dormitory for sure. I lock my phone to check the battery. It's down to 34%, so it should last until tomorrow breakfast at tomorrow breakfast at least. But I have to try finding someone with a charger before that. I'll worry about it tomorrow though. Now it's time to rest a bit. Closing my eyes, I turn onto my side and find a comfortable position. But it's absolutely impossible to fall asleep like that. Even though my body is tired, my mind is still going in high gear. I try to silence my thoughts, but they come back only stronger, like a swarm of bees. Bees, you say? How much, t how much time did pass already? I turn on my phone to check, and apparently it's only been nine minutes since we went to sleep. I hope that Devin is indeed a heavy sleeper. With a sigh, I get out of bed. A jolt of electricity runs through my body as my paws come in contact with the cold floor. Devin's chest rises and falls steadily in a slow rhythm. His face looks relaxed, but that's not enough to be sure if he's asleep. Stepping as quietly as possible, I walk across the room to the window and sit on a chair next to it. The moon is bright tonight, brighter now than it was during the stargazing. It illuminates the room with its soft glow, making it look suspended in time. I glance at the discman, at the discman lying on the cupboard. I wonder what other CDs Devin took here with himself, and what other brand, what other bands does he listen to? I never really got into American Pawball before, but after today, I know they will always remind me of him, and that I want to hear their songs again. It would be nice if we could just sit together and listen to some of his music. Maybe I could try suggesting that tomorrow, after we come back to the guest house. I don't know if he knows Nimble Foxes, but I bet he would like them. I've seen one of their albums among the vinyl records in the common room. We could go there and listen to it together, looking at the cracking, looking at the cracking fire. I wish the key to my room would stay lost for the rest of the camp. Probably will. Ah, oh, never mind. But tomorrow I should get another anyway. I glance at the shining moon again. I feel weirdly attracted to its glow, as if it was trying to send me a message. Only the moon knows. But what that message could be, I don't know. But if it's something important, then I guess I'll find out in time. Day two. God, there's so much content on day one. 
The sand should feel cold under my paws, but it doesn't. Even though it's October and it's night, I don't feel cold at all. Ooh. I'm standing in front of a lake, observing, not mo observing, not moving, still as stone. Waves roll over the surface, distorting the reflection. The lake seems unquiet, as if a battle was raging inside of it. I yearn to know what lies beneath the troubled surface, but I'm afraid to get any closer. The pitch black depths looks like they could swallow me whole and bury me under the waves forever. I sit down on the sand and dig my paws into it. Closing my eyes, I immerse myself in the surroundings. Instead of seeing, I feel everything around me. The grains of sand under my paw pads, the grass growing all around, the trees and the insects living in them, and the family of kestrels sleeping together in a nest nearby. I focus on the lake in front of me and slow down my breathing. I can feel it breathe too. I try to sync my breathing with the rhythm of the lake, trying to understand it. Suddenly I feel the water look at my paws, but I don't flinch. I keep completely still. Slowly, I feel the water ri raise around me. It reaches my waist, my chest, my shoulders. Finally, it touches my snout. With the next breath, I breathe in only water. It doesn't burn my lungs. It only feels denser and heavier than air. Moments later, I'm fully submerged. I draw on water with every breath. It tickles a bit, but I don't move a millimeter. In the lake's embrace, I stay still, observing not moving, still as stone. I feel heavy. Wait, no, that's just the thick duvet I'm covered with. Oh, nice. My mind emerges from the depths of the dream. For a moment, I'm both in the dream and, re and reality simultaneously, still thinking I'm underwater. But it lasts only a second, and then the dark surface of the dream closes behind me. I remember where I am, and... But now, when I'm waking up, the surreality of the situation hits me even harder. I think at one point, I even had a dream about Coach. I can't recall any details, but just this vague feeling. What time is it? Suddenly I get scared that it's already late and my phone alarm didn't go off for some reason. I reach for my phone, lying on the floor next to my bed. 6.38. Just a few minutes before the alarm. Good. I got some decent sleep and I'll have enough time for breakfast to wake up properly, put some clothes on, and wash my face. Putting, on my, putting my phone down, only now I notice Devin doing push-ups on the floor next to his bed. His breathing is heavy and sweat is dripping from his snout. He must have been exercising for a while already. The panther is wearing a tank top and underwear only, and the view is nothing short of stunning. His movements are smooth and precise, his whole body straight as an arrow. He uses his full range of motion and makes a small pause at the bottom of each rep, maintaining perfect posture. That's really a far cry from my own push-ups. I can do maybe 15 half-assed reps and I'm done. I can, I can do about 45. He notices me sitting up on my bed and quickly gets up, wiping his face with a towel. Oh, Carvin, you're up. Yeah, I just woke up a moment ago. Good morning, coach. Good morning. Hope you slept well. Yeah, quite. Thank you. I didn't want to wake you up, but it's quite late already. You might want to hurry up a bit. Um, sure. I rub my eyes sleeping and get out of bed, groaning. It's colder outside of bed, but not as cold as I anticipated. The carpet feels pleasant under my paws, though. Soft and woolly. Outside the window, it's still dark. I'm not. It's not surprising, considering it's October and we're above the Arctic Circle. Glancing at Devin, I see that he's looking away from me. Oh, right, I'm still only wearing my underwear. Oh, sorry. It's fine, don't worry. Devin walks up to the window and leans on the, and leans on the sill, looking outside, undoubtedly to give me some privacy. Oh, oh, goodness. That was a big one. I stumble to the table and put on the clothes from yesterday that I left on the chair, grab a toothbrush and walk away to the bathroom for some morning maintenance. Five minutes later, I'm done with the whole ritual, having washed my face, brushed my teeth, and cleaned my ears. If I had some more time, I'd groom, my f I'd groom the fur on my face, too, but I'll have to skip that today, or at least to wait with it for after breakfast. Devin, already, Devin, already changed into, into his daily clothing, is sitting at the table. I know I told you to hurry up, but you didn't need to go this fast. He's right, I didn't hurry up much more than usual. Oh, he's right, I did hurry up much more than usual. 
A quick glance at my phone tells me it's barely 6.43. I made tea, if you want some. There probably will be some tea served at breakfast, too, but I felt like having a cup of Yunnan. Something tells me they won't have that here. Yunnan? That's... Black tea from the province of Yunnan. This one is a golden tip variety with a mellow, fresh taste, but still a healthy dose of theme. Devin is really fancy with his teas, huh? He ain't the only one. I've got a very nice, expensive tea set. Some really good imported stuff, too. He mentioned that he got into them not long ago, through Rune, so it's understandable he's this excited about them. I get that way about coffee, too, so... A cup would be nice. Yeah. Good, because I already made one. I sit down on a chair the opposite side of Devin, and he puts the cup in front of me. It's too hot yet to take a sip, but the smell is nice. Different than the Jarjeeling from yesterday, it smells like a quiet, sunny morning, if that makes sense. And it makes me think of summer, not autumn. So, Carvin. Uh, about yesterday evening. Oh, shit. I'm not correcting that, I'm saying, oh, shit. As if someone opened a trapdoor under me, I feel like I've plunged into cold water. <laughs> Damn it, Carvin! Why you gotta be such a filthy pervert? Hold up. I feel weak and I wanna hide just anywhere. But I can't, and I keep looking straight into Devin's eyes, even though I can tell he avoids mine. What do you say? I only want to say that I... I only want to say that I didn't... Sudden knocking interrupts him, and he looks at the door in surprise. Carvin? Uh, could you take the cup and sit on your bed for a moment? Sure thing. I do as Devin asked, hiding from view. Professor? I can't hear much what the professor replies, or even tell which professor that is by the voice only, unfortunately. Trying to listen into their conversation, I meanwhile look outside. Instead of a bright, colorful sunrise, there's only a heavy cover of gray clouds and snowflakes dancing in the air. It looks as if someone drained all the colors from the outside world. Any idea how long it might take? I can't hear the words, but I think it's Professor Arn's voice. Why did Devin not want him to see me? Okay, give me just a moment. I'll go there and talk with them myself. Oh, okay. See you there, then. I have to go now. Just close the door when you'll go out for breakfast. Sure thing. I wonder what, can, what that could be. If Devin wanted to tell me, he would just do that, so I don't push. And I can see that he's in a hurry. The sound of the door closing echoes in the room, and the silence that comes after it rings in my ears just as loud. Without Devin in it, the suddenly quiet room feels much colder. Lifeless. Sitting here and looking around, I feel weirdly exposed, as if someone was looking at me. That can't be true, though. I know it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Nevertheless, I feel like I'm lost here in these wooden walls. Somehow I'm sure that Devin knows. He didn't get to finish, though, and I can only guess what he could have wanted to say. And I don't want to know, but postponing it feels even worse. It's so endlessly awkward. Maybe, but maybe I'm worrying for nothing and everything will be fine? He still acted friendly towards me. Maybe I was a bit more self-conscious than before. That's not a big deal. And he made me tea! I raised the cup to my snout, taking a whiff. His smell makes me feel a bit better. Yeah. Everything will go just fine. Even if we likely will have to talk some things through first. There's nothing left for me to do here. I finish the tea in silence and leave the room. Oh, I love that new art from the cafeteria. Oh, that looks like such a wonderful, beautiful morning. Oh, my God. Oh, I've been to places like this. It gives me and brings me back such amazing memories. Mm. I enter the cafeteria around 7. There are less students inside than I thought there would be. And there's no one from the faculty yet. Looking around for familiar faces, I only see Rune sitting at the end of the room. Good morning, Rune! I sit down across the table from him, putting my paws on the table. Oh, Carvin! Morning! He notices me with a short delay, and his movements seem a bit sluggish. He's either not a morning person, or had a really rough night. <laughs> a rough night, you say? Devin isn't with you? No, he went somewhere with Professor Arn. It sounded like something urgent. I wonder what's up. Oh! I'm afraid my worries might come true, then. 
What do you mean? Well, let's wait for Devin. In any case, he should be here soon. I nod and glance at the entrance. A few more students enter the cafeteria, but there's no sign of anyone from the faculty yet. By the way, Rune, how did you sleep? Not the best. But I had some matcha. It should wake me up soon. Matcha? Powdered green tea. I prefer it to coffee. Gives it a similar boost, but it doesn't make you jitter. Yeah, green tea has less caffeine. Makes sense. You have to wait a while longer until it starts working, though. How about you? <sighs> Could be better. Good morning, Carvin. Rune. Oh, Miko! Morning. Miko joins us, sitting down next to me. What's up? I am waiting for Devin. He should be here with some bad news in a moment. Bad news? Miko looks at the deer, puzzled. Ah! Alarm Chan! You filthy bitch! <laughs> I'm sorry, Alarm Chan. I don't mean to lash out. Oh man, this is uh, this is this is interesting. I like the new artwork for day two. It's very nice. And you guys, my props to the dev team if you guys watch my videos. I love this game. It's so good. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.